Good morning. Thank you and welcome to this, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we are looking at the theme, Lord, teach us how to pray. We begin our service today with our opening hymn, hymn number 413. Please stand. The order of service today is found on page 38 in your hymnal and also printed on our screens. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Let us pray. O Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us always to ask according to your will that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson today is taken from the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 20 through 32. Here we have the scene just after the Lord had appeared to Abraham and told him that he was going to have a son. And the three visitors then make a program where two go off to Sodom and Gomorrah and one remains and Abraham has something to say to the one who remains. It's a prayer. And you might be surprised as you hear this lesson that Abraham was praying that the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah should not be destroyed. And the reason why he was so persistent in that prayer is because his nephew Lot and Lot's family were living in that area. So the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very flagrant, I will go down now and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has come to me. If not, I will know. The two men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham approached him and said, Will you really sweep away the righteous along with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep them away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous who are in it? You would never do such a thing, killing the righteous along with the wicked, treating the righteous the same as the wicked. You would never do such a thing. The judge of all the earth should do right, shouldn't he? The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people within the city of Sodom, then I will spare the entire place for their sake. Abraham answered, See now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to my Lord. What if there are five fewer than 50 righteous? Will you destroy the entire city if the number is five short? He said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. He spoke to him yet again and said, what if only 40 are found there? He said, I will not do it for the sake of the 40. He said, please, do not be angry, my Lord, but I will speak again. What if 30 are found there? He said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, see now, I have taken it upon myself to speak to my Lord. What if there are 20 found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. He said, please, do not be angry, my Lord, but I will speak just once more. What if 10 are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. We continue now with the psalm of the day, Psalm 6, found on page 66 in your hymnal or printed on our screen.
Our second lesson today is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. Here we have the reason why we have the ability and the right to be able to go to God in prayer. It's because God has made us right with him through faith in Jesus, who is our Savior. Paul writes, Therefore, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him by being rooted and built up in him and strengthened in the faith, just as you were taught while you overflow in faith with thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, which are in accord with human tradition, namely the basic principles of the world, but not in accord with Christ. For all the fullness of God dwells, being, being dwells bodily in Christ, and you have been brought to fullness in him. Christ is the head over every ruler and authority. You were also circumcised in him with a circumcision not done by human hands in the putting off of the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with Christ in baptism and in baptism you were also raised with him through the faith worked by the God who raised Christ from the dead. Even when you were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ by forgiving us all our trespasses. God erased the record of our debt brought against us by his legal demands. This record stood against us, but he took it away by nailing it to the cross. After disarming the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them by triumphing over them in Christ. The verse of the day. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Please stand for the gospel. Our gospel lesson for today is taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. This will also serve as our sermon text for today. On another occasion, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine who is on a journey has come to me, and I do not have anything to set before him. And the one inside replies, don't bother me, the door is already locked, 
and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, even if he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his bold persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. I tell you, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if your son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue now with the hymn of the day, 412. God's grace, his mercy, his peace are found in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The text for today's message, our gospel reading, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. I'd like to start my message by reading verse 1 once again. On another occasion, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. My dear friends in Christ, the third week in July, we had our vacation Bible school program at St. John together with children from Zion in Peshtigo. And every morning we had a devotion with the children. And following devotion, we would pray a prayer, Luther's morning prayer. It was designed so that the children would hear the prayer and start to learn this prayer. Perhaps some of you are familiar with it. If not, 
Bear with me as I pray it just now, this morning. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you will keep me this day also from sin and every evil, and that all my doings and life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. On Tuesday at Vacation Bible School, I was the one leading the devotion. And following the prayer and the amen, a young boy who was in our first grade group asked me, Pastor, can I pray also? And I said to him, you have a prayer? He said, yes, I know a prayer. I want to pray. And I said, if you'd like to pray, yes, you can pray. And he folded his hands and he began. Our Father, who art in heaven. And all of us joined him. The others folded their hands and began, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we were praying, I looked at this young boy. And I could see in his face such joy. And I could hear it in his voice as he continued together with all of us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the other children seemed to get louder and louder as we went along. Most of them seemed to know the words. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And then came the Amen with great enthusiasm. And I looked over at this young boy and that smile was even bigger. And I thought to myself, wow, so young. And he knew the words to the Lord's Prayer. But there was something more here than the fact that he knew the words to pray. He actually understood and had received from Jesus the answer to the request that his disciple asked in our reading today. Teach us to pray. For he didn't just know the words to pray. He knew the joy-filled, spirit-filled way to pray. He knew how to pray. Our text for today begins with Jesus praying. On another occasion, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. The scriptures tell us in our New Testament gospel readings that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He did it publicly and he did it privately. And his disciples observed Jesus' prayer life. And there was something different that they noticed in the way that Jesus prayed. It was different from the way the Pharisees and the scribes and perhaps different from the way they had been praying. It made them want to learn more. 
to learn how to pray. And we get a clue from how Jesus was praying. When we look at chapter 10 in Luke, the story goes that just after Jesus had sent out his disciples two by two to go out and spread the message that the kingdom of heaven was near, and when the disciples had come back to Jesus and reported everything that had happened and all of the exciting things that they had observed when preaching the gospel message, Jesus prayed. And listen to how Luke describes it. At that time, Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. What a beautiful picture. Think about it for a moment. Prayer, full of joy, filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like that young boy I told you about at VBS. The day before, he had been learning about his good shepherd from Psalm 23. How Jesus is his good shepherd and how Jesus knows him and even calls him by name, filled with joy over that. Just like Jesus said, and it has been revealed to little children. Joyful, spirit-filled prayer. And St. Paul tells us that's how we should pray. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. It's no wonder the disciples wanted to learn how to do this. They noticed that Jesus had this incredible relationship with his Father. And that praying should be something filled with joy and spirit-filled. But when I see the disciples ask this question, Lord, teach us to pray, I can't help but think and wonder, had they not been praying up until this time? Well, that could not be further from the truth. Because Jewish tradition had many Jewish prayers. In fact, if you were a practicing Jew at the time of Jesus, you would have been praying three times a day. In the morning, then again at 3 p.m., and then again at sunset. Coinciding with the three annual daily sacrifices that would be happening at the temple. And we know about this when we look at a story in the Old Testament, when Daniel was in captivity in Babylon and he prayed three times a day when facing towards Jerusalem. And these prayers would have involved asking for blessing, praise and thanksgiving. They would have prayed before meals, they would have prayed on the Sabbath, they would have been praying during the Passover meal, and they would have had prayers in their synagogues, their church services. So there's no doubt in my mind that they had a full prayer life, but they wanted more. They wanted to pray like Jesus did. They wanted to understand the joy, the passion, the intimacy, the connection that Jesus had with his heavenly Father. And in response to their request, Jesus said this, when you pray, 
Did you notice that? Jesus didn't answer if you pray, but when you pray. Jesus knew that they needed this relationship with God the Father, this connection in prayer, to help them on their future journey when things would get difficult. And we need it too in this sin-filled world. When you pray, not if you pray. What about us? Do we pray? Do we really pray? Prayer is simply talking to God. And God answers our prayer and speaks directly back to us when we hear and listen to what he has to say in his word. But are there times when we struggle to believe God's promises? What about that sin in your life that happened so long ago? Or that sin from last week, or that sin from yesterday, or that sin from this morning that you can't shake off? That you think, am I really, truly forgiven? This is where speaking to God comes in. And Jesus says this. Simply say to God, forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And listen to God's answer. When he says in his word, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But what about that medical report that you just got? Or that bill that seems well overdue? Jesus says, say this, deliver us, deliver us from evil. This is where our Father invites us to come to him and speak to him, talk to him, and he answers. He answers in his word when he says his mercies are new every morning. And listen to Jesus when Jesus says, you are more valuable than the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, more valuable. And he promises to take care of you more than he takes care of them. But there are times when prayer answers seem to be delayed. In our text for today, Jesus reminds us to keep talking, keep talking to God. Don't give up. Because God is our loving Father and he will answer our prayer but he answers in a way that is best for us, for our highest good. The first story we had in our text of the persistent neighbor reminds us that Jesus is telling us in our text, God will answer our prayers. And the second story tells us that God will answer our prayer by giving us what is good for us. And listen to the greatest good that Jesus reminds us to ask for. What father among you, if your son asks for bread, would give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If you then 
Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ask that God gives you the Holy Spirit. Faith that is strong, that overcomes the greatest gift that the Father can give to us. Joyful, spirit-filled prayer can be a great source of comfort for us. Prayer doesn't involve learning techniques or mastering a text. No. God doesn't grade our prayer with perfection or brush aside a prayer that is trivial. No. Prayer is simply spending time talking to God, and then waiting and listening to his answer of love and guidance when he speaks back to us in his word. So when we struggle with prayer, we can always ask Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God that comes to us through faith in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, may keep your hearts and minds in faith. Amen. Please turn with me now to the words of the Apostles' Creed printed on our screen or found on page 41, and we'll confess together our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with prayer. Dearest Jesus, we pray in your name. Your name means everything to us, for through you we are saved from our sins. Your name invites our sweetest, purest, and most delightful thoughts. There is no other name like it. Your name represents the greatest love ever demonstrated on earth, the Father's love that sacrificed you his one and only Son, for us. Your name is a haven of refuge to our troubled souls, buffeted by the winds of hostility and adversity. It is our shield against temptation, as well as our pardon for all the sins we have done. It brings peace to our troubled conscience. It is a balm that heals our broken heart in your name, our prayers are offered, and for your sake, they are heard and answered. Your name is the name by which both rich and poor, great and small, can approach God with faith and confidence. Your name, O oh Jesus, is God's promise to us of a better life beyond this one, because your name simply means Savior. O oh Jesus, when we pray in your name, we are confident that God the Father listens to our prayers and answers them. And at this time, we, we offer a prayer on behalf of a couple who are celebrating their 57th wedding anniversary today. 
Doug and Karen Schrader, we pray. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the grace by which you have sustained your servants throughout the 57 years of their married life. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with the unselfish love that reflects your sacrificial love for them, so that their love for each other may never grow weary. With every joy and sorrow they share, bring them closer to each other and to you, their God and Lord. And encourage all husbands and wives as they seek to fulfill their marriage promises and bless all our homes with your abiding peace. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue now with our next hymn, hymn number 410. And as we sing this hymn, the nine verses, you will notice that we are singing and explaining to ourselves the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray.
Please stand for prayer. We pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for your closing hymn. that there is a survey that we're asking the congregation to help us with. This concerns the proposed time 
of change for worship. The proposal is to change the worship time from 9.30 to 10 o'clock and Sunday school and Bible study would be starting at 9 o'clock. The rationale for this is to help with the current vacancies that are happening in our, our circuit. Right now we have five churches that have vacancies and the pastors that are assisting with the vacancies. The time change would allow Pastor Meislick to be able to help and other pastors to be able to help. And if needed, the time change would also allow me to be able to help with certain situations. It would also help with filling in for emergencies. If Pastor Meislick or myself is sick, I would be able to take the service for Pastor Meislick in the morning and then come here for our service and in reverse, Pastor Meislick could do the same. The benefit also is that we would not have the difficulty of arranging guest preachers, which is becoming more and more difficult. And an added bonus is that there would be a cost benefit to the congregation. Zion has proposed to change their worship service to 8.30, and they have voted to change that service time. And they are saying that they will implement it if we change to 10 a.m., but again, that's no threat to us. So I'm asking if you would like to fill out a survey, if you would like to say yes to the time change, please say yes. If you want to say no, you can say no. If you don't have an opinion one way or the other, you don't have to fill out a survey. Thank you. Two announcements. Uh, the first announcement is that we will be having our church picnic today for those who are able to stay. Things have been arranged and we pray that the weather will cooperate now. Yesterday was fun trying to set up in the rain, but we were able to set up. And as those go to uh, help to get things arranged, we're going to try to be eating by 11 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. But we will need some extra help wiping down the tables and the chairs because the rain did come in on the tables and the chairs. So I think we'll have to wipe down with paper towel each or many of the chairs. So if you can help with that as you go over, that would be great. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all at the picnic if you can be there. <laughs> 